What kind of cut can I do for you today? Just a taper. I do like the lengths though. You gonna keep it? Yeah. Get you looking nice? Mm hmm Let's do it. Alright. So to start off this cut, what we're going to do is clip up the hair and that's just so we get it out the way and we can work with um, the area that we need to and then we're just going to comb down the area that we have parted as well. And the reason we have it kind of parted and sectioned off is because our hair is so long, we kind of have to do that, right? So now we're going to come in with our two guard open, but when I'm coming in with this two guard and debulking, I'm being sure to leave hair towards the top of that taper. So you'll see I'm going to flick out, not really, you know, take it all the way up to the part line. And now I'm going to go ahead and set in my broad line with my trimmer. And what I want to do is start where the end of the ear is, I mean, where the end of the eyebrow is and where the ear connects to the head. And then we'll just go ahead and broad that out. Now we're going to follow it up with our shaver to get it nice and close to the skin. And then the next step is our lever open, just like we do with every fading system in every video that I do. We're going to start off with that lever open. And we're going up about a finger's width here. We're not making this too wide of a line or too thin of a line. And now to get rid of the light line in between, I went ahead and closed that lever. And then we'll open it little by little. Now we're going to follow it up with our one guard lever all the way open, doing the same thing. And we're just going to work our way up. So again, we're going up about a finger's width and you'll notice I'm using a lot of the corner of the blade and that's just because we're working in such a small area. I don't want to risk, you know, cutting off too much. So let's just throw our one guard and now to get rid of that line, we're going to come in with our half guard halfway and then we'll close it as needed. So we're going to start off halfway here, see what it does. Now you'll see me close it all the way and we're really utilizing the corner of that blade to get into any of dark areas that we see. And now we're going to come in with our one and a half open right under that two open that we started off this taper with and now we're going to close it all the way. And now to blend into some of that weight that we left at the top of the taper, I'm going to do some clipper over comb. And like I said, this isn't a lot of weight because the hair is going to hang over anyway, but I'm leaving just enough to where it's dark. And when we let the curls go on top of it, it looks like it blends a little better. You know what I mean? And now we're going to come in with our thinning shear to soften everything up. And after this, I was safe to say, you know, we can move on to the other side of the taper. So again, we're going to follow that same system to guard open being sure to leave some of that hair towards the top of that taper. And the reason I don't take the two guard all the way up to the part line is because once we take the curls out of the clip and they fall over, it's going to look as if it's just falling onto shaved, a shaved head. You know what I mean? And it's going to fall. And yes, it's an undercut and there is unevenness, but it's going to fall to where the darkness of the top of that taper kind of gives it a blended illusion in a way if that makes sense i don't know now we're coming in with the shaver following that same system nothing too crazy and now we're going to use our lever open and the reason i'm giving it that burst shape is so i keep the edges dark when we come in to do her lineup and i will go ahead and close it and start attacking this line right here And I know about y'all, man, but tapers have been seeming super easy to me lately. I know when I first started off, tapers were probably like the, the hardest thing for me to learn, really. And it's because we're doing a blend in such a small area. I know for a lot of people, it's different. They say tapers are easy. Fade was hard. But honestly, for me, the fade was easy because we just had a lot more surface area and canvas to work with. This is so tight and so small, you know, that I really struggled. But now I feel like tapers, man, I could do them in my sleep. So hopefully this tutorial helps you get to that place. You know what I mean? That was the goal of me saying that. I'm not gloating, but you know. You know what I'm saying? Now we're just cleaning it up with that half guard. 
and then under that two we're gonna use that one and a half open just like we did on the other side and in everyday cutting you know if I'm not recording I would have did both sides of the taper already in about like eight ten minutes and then we're gonna go ahead and do the neck taper and line everything up and she'll be done because she did say she wanted to keep the length of the curl so it made her job a lot easier Now we're just doing some clipper over comb. As you keep seeing, her hair is flipping up, so I'm being sure to comb it down. And again, the top of this taper, um, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. I know that sounds really bad to say as someone who's educating and teaching, but the hair on top is going to fall right over the top of that taper anyway. You know what I mean? She doesn't tie it up. She doesn't wear it in a ponytail. So it doesn't have to be completely perfect. All right, I feel like a lot of times as barbers, you know, we want every haircut to be Instagram quality. Granted, I do too. But at the same time, you know, when we're cutting in a shop every day, you know, we're on a time crunch. We're on a time limit. And if we can finish haircuts faster than, you know, we need to without rushing or short changing the client in any way, shape, or form, you know, you want to do that because you want to make the most money as possible. So she wears her hair down so the top of the taper doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just saying. Now we're cleaning up the neck taper with our trimmer. We're going to establish that bald line. And we're starting right below the bottom of her ear. We're not taking it up too high. It's kind of the midway point. Personally, I don't like when tapers are too low. Um, I feel like they don't look as clean. They don't last as long. So I think mid to high tapers is definitely what I always suggest. And you'll see I'm moving that shaver sideways and that's because in the nape area a lot of times the hair crows in every which direction so I'm being sure to cut against the grain and now for the neck taper we're gonna come in lever open and we can make our guidelines a little thicker in the back here and that's just because we have a lot more area to work with you know what I mean so we're just brushing every time we pass the clipper to get rid of any flyaways and really smooth that hair down and now we're going to get rid of the line in between with our lever closed and then we'll open it up little by little. Now we're going to move on to our one guard lever open and we're going to go fully open about a finger's width here once again. And we're just going to work our way up. And same thing with the back of this taper. We want to leave enough hair towards the top and when we take the hair down it kind of falls right on top of it and gives the illusion of it being blended. Now we're going to use our two guard open and with this we're just coming off the shape of his head. We're not taking it all the way up to that part line. And now we're going to come in with our one and a half and we're going to start blending down. So we're going to start off all the way open and then we'll close it little by little as needed. So right there I closed the lever all the way. You can see as we work at that line, it's starting to get blended out. And this taper is coming together already, but to get rid of that very last line, we're going to do a lever open with our half guard. And like I always say, we'll go ahead and close that lever little by little, just as I did right here. We're just working, man. Trying to really get this taper popping, looking right. And now to blend into some of that weight at the top of the taper, we'll just do some clipper over comb. Nothing crazy because we don't want to take off too much here. And I'm deep walking behind the ear here with the two guard because she hates having, you know, a bushy, you know, nape or behind the ear area. So I always lower that to a two. And then it also helps with catching a nice line as well. So I'm starting at the top of the ear and then I'll wait, work my way towards the bottom. And you'll see once we line up the nape in the front, the taper really comes to life and you'll see every little detail, good and bad. So you might need to go back in detail as well. Now 
Now we're just cleaning it up, getting it right. And now we'll do the same thing on the other side, starting at the top of the ear, not, not trying to take it too high, trying to keep it as natural as possible. And then we'll work our way towards the bottom of that nape. And you're going to see after I complete this step exactly what I mean when I say leaving the way at the top of the taper. So right here, I let the hair kind of fall over and you can see it's falling onto hair that has the same shade of darkness. So it doesn't look like a complete undercut. You know what I mean? And now we're going to line up her left corner. She doesn't do a line straight across because towards the middle, her hair kind of grows upwards. So it's lighter. So all we do is just clean up her box area and her arches keeping it as natural as we can but at the same time you want to get it as sharp and as clean as you can and now for her arch right here i'm just showing you you know all the hairs that are hanging over her natural line and then we'll go ahead and clean up her arch starting at the top and then we'll go to the bottom right here and meet those two points in the middle and that'll give us that nice arch shape And now to enhance this, we're going to come in with our Kiss Express Enhancement and our Barber Plug card. And we're just going to apply it lightly and darken it up as needed. Nothing too crazy. We just want to make it, you know, pop a little more. Now we'll go ahead and line up her right side as well. I was showing you right there that those are overhang hairs. So this right here is not a pushback. Those are more bangs. And we're just bringing that across. Now we're going to start at the top of the arch just like i said and then we'll go to the bottom and meet those two points in the middle and it's all about having a system and when you have a system in place it's a lot easier to get to that final outcome and final you know result more efficiently and with peace of mind as well so now we're going to go ahead and enhance this side as well that taper is looking clean and now i'm going to go ahead and hit it with the razor and with the razor what this is going to do is bring any excess color back up to where it's supposed to be. And at the same time, it's going to get rid of all those little hairs that the trimmer couldn't get and get it nice and sharp. So you want to make sure to stretch the skin in the opposite direction. So that way you don't cause any irritation. Same thing with this side. You'll see I'm pulling downwards while I move the razor upwards. And you can see what I mean is bringing that color right to the spot where it's supposed to be. Because a lot of times when you're spraying with the card, some of it can get under the card. And, you know, the razor just makes it extra clean and extra sharp. And now what I'm going to do is I wet it and I'm going to diffuse her hair. And this is just to lift it up so we can see her taper more. But fam, this is the cut. As you can see, the taper really bring the curls together and made it look a lot cleaner. But if this video helped you in any way, shape, or form, hit that like and subscribe button. And like always, I will catch y'all next time. Peace.